Hello, Brobs. We're back with more books and some beer. Pumpkin beer, purportedly, but it doesn't taste much like pumpkin. In fact, it, I mean, look at this witch's cauldron here. It's life. Brewing life inside here. The hell is going on in there? Look at this. Crazy. Let's get to these goddamn books. The Gang on Kendall Street, a 50s memoir, growing up in Henry Ford's home down. Now I have another book on Kendall Street, I believe. Could be this book, too. I don't know. But since I did not know, I bought it. It's about Dearborn. I was hoping that uh, it was somewhere near where Laura Mundo lived, but I will not know. I looked it up. Wouldn't that be great if the Mundo children were in there? And Laura herself. I don't know. In the last review, I, which I've been late to put the books away, I picked up The Witch of Blackbird Pond, liter Literature Connections, It related readings. But then I figured, which is kind of weird, honestly, that I found both two editions today after probably never seeing the book ever before. This is an earlier edition, let's say 70s, 80s. No, it's not 58, 72. And this one's probably 90s, 80s, 90s. I mean, it looks like a kid's book, and I believe it is. It seems to have some esteem to it, 87. So yeah. Weird that I found two copies in two different consecutive stalls today. Slips of Speech by Bachtel. It was originally published in 1901 by the Penn Publishing Company, but Gale Research republished it in 74. Homer, in all probability, knew no rules of rhetoric and was not tortured with the consideration of grammatical construction. And yet, his verse will endure through time. If everybody possessed the genius of Homer, rules and cautions in writing would be unnecessary. Today, all men speak and most men write, but it is observed that those who most closely follow Homer's method of writing without rules are most unlike Homer. In the results, the ancient bard was a law unto himself. We need rules for our guidance. No, we don't. But I buy it anyways. I don't believe in the rules of English. You write what you want to. I mean, you have to form a sentence. But it doesn't have to be to the, to the, what's the word, to the law. There's another 99 cent book. What's that? Faithful to the laws, the laws of, the laws of English. This is uh, the short novels of Colette, which I'll probably sell, unless there's something in here that makes it. This fucker better not smell like smoke. No, it does not smell like smoke. A couple books I was going to get today smelled, oh look, little wolves, smelled so rancidly. I have almost started the Mary Magdalene and Mary, Jesus' mother collection today, but every one of the books smelled rancidly of cigarette smoke.
which I cannot abide by. You will follow my other books. Foul, not follow. So yeah, no, what year is this? 51 or something? Uh, 51, I'm right. 1951. This book I got for 50 cents because it was half off. Great Tales from English History. The Truth About King Arthur, Lady Godiva, Richard de Lionheart, and more. White tag was 50% off. Kedman, the first English poet. Anyways, that's that. Carlos Fuentes, holy place. Translated by Suzanne Jill Levine. Can't remember what the book was called that I bought by Carlos Fuentes. The hell's that book called? Aura. Aura. And that was pretty good, and I paid 30 for that one. Only 59 cents for this one. And this is paperback. It's got a cool man turning into a dog. Dog. Yeah, let's read the first bits. What year is it from? 67. Original title of Holy Place is Zona Sagrada. One, happily ever after. I'd read that Marquis de Sade, but I don't know what the fuck it means. And I read French. It is Sunday, and the whole town is gathered on the beach, watching the boys play soccer. But your book is your look is elsewhere. The islands are close by. You know the legend. You point to them with your hand, and tell me what I do not know. They are the islands of the siren. <laughs> Watch over the route to Capri. 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 You say that if you listen to this song, you must accept the risk. And Ulysses was, was prudent. What were those rumors? I can't tell if I'm really listening to you. The young men of Positanio, bums and students, porters and waiters, summertime gigolos, play with that nervous energy, that mask, muscular shit. This one, I found at the Salivating Army. I had overlooked it the first go-through, which is why I usually do a, a look back. And this is the first edition of I Heard the Owl Call My Name by Margaret Craven. You can see an Art Deco owl there. An unlikely author. She's from Helena, Montana. I don't know what I'll do with this. Print and candor. Look at the Art Deco Owl, buddy. And some fuck rod. Crossed out their name, which you can probably read to the back. No, you can't. You cunt. You can't read it, bro. What is this even about? Is perhaps the intense unity of this book of fact and music and mood and deep questioning, which ultimately qualifies it as a genuinely inspired work of art. The story is that of a young priest who is sent by his bishop in Kijomi Village, British Columbia, to minister to the Indians of the Bajawajawa tribe. The priest is not aware that the that he has only three years to live, <laughs> but the bishop is and sends him where he will be able to live deeply the short time remaining to him. He is sent to live with and learn from and teach the to sweat to love the peoples and quicker like the reader with the priest becomes closely acquainted with these India engines. Their daily activities, their myths, their character what they were and what they are becoming. These facts emerge in the language of poetry. Yeah, I'm selling that. 
I would like to put a jacket on that though. A mile out just to see how nice it looks. Dick Gregory's natural diet for folks who eat cooking with Mother Nature. An introduction to natural foods written with an eye to good health and an air for the witty line. Even for those not ready to replace the sirloin with soy being economic considerations notwithstanding. Gregory's discourse on the typical mistreatment of the digestion of the show. Isn't this the guy who wrote the N-word book? Yeah, he is. There it is. My other books, Dick Gregory's Political Primer, More Lies, No More Lies, Write Me in The Shadow That Scares Me, What's Happening, N-Word from the Back of the Bus. These literal. There it is. It's a literal diet. Fasting, Mother's Nature's Mr. Clean. See if that's worth anything. The last of the thrift store books is this. The Hemingway Patrols, Ernest Hemingway and his Hunt for U-Boats. <laughs> nah, that beer is not good. Maybe the second one would be better. Man, that's heavy, heavy, heavy maple syrup. I can't abide by that bullshit. What was it during the the winter of forty two and the end of forty three? Ernest Hemingway actively patrolled the Gulf Stream in the waters off Cuba's North Shore in his wooden fishing boat, Pilar, looking for German submarines. His patrols were supervised by the U.S. Navy and served as a part of a anti-submarine warfare at a time when U-boat attacks were decimating Allied merchant shipping in the region. The huge long-distance subs ultimately sank hundreds of ships in the Atlantic theater, killing thousands of seamen and Navy men too. They were deadly and efficient, and to confront them in a small wooden fishing vessel was to court instant annihilation. Yet Hemingway and his crew of Friends were prepared to do just that, armed with only grenades and sub and submachine guns. Well, that's something. They planned to attack any U-boat they encountered. Well, almost no attention has been paid to these patrols other than casual mentions and standard biographies. They became the foundation of some of Hemingway's future work, especially The Old Man in the Sea and Islands in the Stream. On shore, the patrols were a source of mounting friction between Hemingway and his wife, the writer Martha Gellhorn, who was brilliant, difficult, and skeptical of Hemingway's pursuit. Martha was not particularly beautiful, but possessed that certain something that drove men, Hemingway included, to distraction. He had divorced his second wife to marry Martha, and yet by the time he began patrolling in Pilar, the love affair was doomed, perhaps pushing him more intently toward confrontation with the U-boats. I could have swore I read somewhere that uh, he was actually delivering arms to communists or <laughs> something like that. Maybe I'm wrong. I could have swore that's what the... Maybe that was later on. I don't know. But that's that. And that beer's giving me a fucking headache. These, as you can see, I purchased it in this, not in the state sale, but a... Antique Mall Craft... Antique Craft Mall. Bunch of Hitler books, Hitler and German Nazi books. The Goebbels Diaries, edited and translated by Louis P. Lochner. New in this edition, afterward by Brigadier General Telford Taylor. The Mind of El Adolf Hitler. Oh, 
Walter Langer, why the evil genius acted the way he did. A masterpiece. Invasion, They're Coming by Paul Cavell. Or Carell, one of the two. As seen through the eyes of the German Wehrmacht. What it was like to be there as the Third Reich crumbled. It's Carell. Canaris, Charles Whiting. Secretive, shadowy Admiral Canaris headed the German Secret Service until his imprisonment and execution in the last days of the war. Insofar as it can be known, this is his story. Some more mass market paperbacks for my collection. Hitler directs his war. I don't know if these are worth anything. I probably should look them up. But I didn't feel like it. 50 cents is a fair price for 1960s and 70s. That one's probably 80s. Mass market paperbacks on Adolfsky. What does this mean? Mac. Hitler directs his war. Look at that guy. A fucking communist bastard. A terrifying expose of Nazi Germany to stand beside inside the Third, third, the third Reich. Quite frankly, Nazis bore me. The Nazis that they don't tell you about are the real Nazis. Not the fake ones that they call Trump. Trump's a mixed economy status. Not a capitalist, capitalist, lazy for capitalists, as they'd like you to believe. He's a mixed economy status. Has been and always will be. He was a fascist, and most of our country's politicians are fascist and communist. I mean, you can't even call them mixed economy status at this point. They're just fascist and communist. About five or six of them are mixed economy status. The rest are just downright fascists. Believe in government, love government. Chew on the fat of government. And this beer is just fucking just heavy. I can't do it. I can't. <clears throat> 